Okay, Matt Kenseth has joined us. Matt drives the number 17 Zest Ford for Roush Fenway Racing. And Matt is trying to become the first driver to win both the Daytona 500 and the Coke Zero 400 in the same season since what time? When did you say? 1982. I believe it was Bobby Allison that did that. So Matt is the only person that is capable of doing that. Uh, because he won the Daytona 500. So, uh, uh, Matt, welcome here back to a place that uh, certainly brings back some fond memories back in February, and I know you've been back down here a couple times uh, to do some uh, appearances and that type of thing. But uh, just talk about uh, racing at Daytona, the Super Speedway restrictor plate racing. Uh, you've become uh, a little more adept at. Pop that on there. says it oh there we go and delayed well i mean you gotta like anywhere else you gotta have fast race cars in here um the race cars obviously have more to do with uh, your success or failures probably than, than some of the other race tracks so you gotta have that and um we've had that so far this year at the at the plate races so uh hopefully our car will run like uh did the last two races and we'll be fast enough to work our way toward the front and uh, and hopefully stay there so um, you're right. We're the only one who has a shot at that this year. And the next year's Daytona 500 will be the only one who has a shot at winning them. That's right. We take it one year at a time. Questions for Matt Kenseth, and we'll uh, call on you, bring you the wireless mic. We'll start over here with Mike Embry and then go to Nate. MikeEmbrySpeed.com. Uh, Matt, a uh, couple of things about Bruton Smith's recent comments, which I'm sure you've heard about. Uh, a, do you think the racing needs to be kind of juiced up? And, and B, what do you think of his concept of uh, mandatory cautions? Uh, I, I didn't hear his comments. Those must have been it. I, I, didn't, I didn't hear any comments that he made. Well, he, he recommended that NASCAR add schedule cautions to every race to rebunch the field, that sort of thing. Oh, okay. Um, I, I don't, I don't know that I have much of a good comment on that one. Like mandatory, cautions? mandatory cautions? When we know when they're going to come out? No, not really. I mean, we kind of do that, you know, with competition yellows and stuff when the track's green and I don't know that it, I don't know that it matters a whole bunch. I think when the track's green and there's been rain and they do it, I think it's always good because some guys maybe didn't get as much practice or something like that, but um, other than that, I don't, I don't, I don't think we need that. I mean, I, I, I think you have a pretty good mix of um, some races with long green flag runs and some races with short runs. And I think some of the races that people called uh, called uh, us out on for for not being exciting or whatever, them long greens at the end were actually pretty exciting. It just depends what you're looking for. I mean, every race isn't going to be, you know, green white checkers with cars all over the place. So I think of uh, Kansas, they had that real long green at the run end. I think it had two full runs and. Uh, you know, it took Denny a run and a half to run down the 56 car and pass him with like 10 to go or something. So, I mean, I think some of them races are really good races. It just depends what you're looking for. Yeah, let's come back over here to Nate, and then we'll go to Bob Puckers. Uh, Nate Ryan, USA Day. Uh, Matt, uh, Greg Biffle was talking earlier about how the, the, the strength of the Roush Fenway cars and the, the restrictor plate tracks and how it's uh, what's changed over the last couple of years. He said it's mostly engineering. Uh, Todd Parrott apparently brought some good ideas, too. W what do you think has changed? Because for a while, it seemed like there was – the Roush cars weren't so great, but the last two years, it's almost like you guys have sort of entered into that DEI style dominance of like a decade ago. Well, you know, a decade ago was a lot different than now with the rules on the cars. I think the cars are just incredibly close to being the same at these plate races. So, you know, in my opinion, it's probably mostly, uh, you know, engine. I mean, there's two things that make you go fast here for, for qualifying, especially you can kind of see the speed of the cars. And, and the race, you know, there's a little more to do with maybe, you know, strategy or some moves you make or don't make and things like that in the draft. But I think uh, horsepower and, and horsepower and aerodynamic drag, I mean, are the two things that make your cars go fast or slow when you come to Daytona and Talladega. So I think that for whatever reason, um, I think all our stuff runs good and Doug Yates does a great job with all that stuff. But certainly the plate stuff this year has been uh, has been been really good. And it's a different year with fuel injection. You know, first year we've done that. So it seems like they've done a really um, exceptional job on hitting that just right on the uh, on the plate stuff so far. Let's go to Bob and then to Jenna. Bob Parker, Sporting News. Um, at the end of the race, and you're trying to figure out who to work with, do you lean more towards friends and people you trust, or do you go with whoever 
has worked, whosever car has worked best with yours during the event? Uh, I think you always, uh, at the very end of the race, I think you always choose what you think is going to be your best option to win the race or to finish as high as you can finish. So I think, uh, you know, there's been times you've been down here where you pretty much are all in trying to help a teammate and uh, maybe you keep working together and it's just you're not on the same page, your cars don't work together or whatever, and you, maybe you'll find somebody in the middle of the race that your, your car works well with. So, um, you know, I think you kind of kind of go, um, you know, somebody you trust or, or you know what moves they're going to make because maybe you ran with them earlier in the race, uh, but mainly the car, uh, you know, the guy who thinks is going to make the best moves and the car that's the fastest um, at the same time to try to win that race. So. Uh, the last two times we got fortunate, um, all our rush cars were really fast, and I was able to get with Greg both of the last two plate races because I think he's had one of the best cars. So um, if your cars do run really well together and you're making the same moves and thinking alike, it's definitely a bonus if you can work with a teammate. Go ahead, Jenna. Jenna Fire AP. Hi, Matt. How are you? Good. Um, talking with Greg earlier today about the 500, and he talked about how many times he's watched it and how it sort of haunts him. What could he have done differently there, do you think? I thought he did everything perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about Talladega. I'm like, how do we get separated? We took off on the last restart, and I thought we were going to be one, two. And actually, I thought he was probably going to bit locked out of me and probably pass me, you know, for the win at the end. And I don't, I don't know how we got separated there. So, you know, I don't know. The plate races are are funny. Sometimes you think you have it figured out, and it just doesn't doesn't work out for whatever reason. I'm not sure why. Let's go over here to uh, let's get Buddy Shacklett. Young man on the back row, and then we'll work our way up the side row. Go ahead. Hey, Matt, buddy, Shacklett, Daytona Beach News Journal. Um, you've dabbled in your share of nationwide races over the year and gone down there won your share of races. Uh, in the past, you know, there was the old bushwhacker term where you guys would come down and win all the races. This year you've got eight winners in, in 15 races. Uh, why do you think there's there's that much more parity? Is it because of the distinction now is running, running for championships and just how you think that's changed? Well, I think the cars are closer to the same than what they're what they ever were. So I think the um, you know the guys with the with the cup teams probably don't have maybe as big of an advantage as, as maybe some other teams. I think there's probably overall less drivers running it, running all of them, and running a majority of them cup drivers than what there probably was before. So it probably evens out the chances a little bit. Let's go to the young man back there, and then we'll work to Claire and then to Marty. Hey, Matt, Michael Kelly with uh, Channel 4 in Jacksonville. With the hot temperatures in July, how much does that affect your strategy between the two races in Daytona? Well, there's not a lot you can do about the cooling, you know, whatever the rules are they are. So I think it's kind of the same as, uh, you know, Talladega, I think, was was real hot. Some people had more problems than others, but I found the key to be, which you, you don't always have that choice. Your car has to be fast, but the farther you move toward the front, the better you know, the better and fresher and cooler the air is, you know, the more air you get going through your grill and through your radiator and you keep the car that much cooler. So I think, uh, anyway, my plan sitting here today until you get into the race and see how fast your car is and all that stuff is try to stay up toward the front as far as you can. And I think uh, you have less, uh, less cooling issues. What, Claire? Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. There was a really good story about you in the USA Today today that you oh, know, the one that Nate called said me cheap. Cheap, yeah. yeah. No, but, uh, about the tire that Eddie Gossage got. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> well, a are are you as cheap as that Drifty. story portrayed? Drifty. <laughs> no, uh, are you as cheap as that story portrayed? But really, my question was that: Do you are you? Uh, you know, uh, in, in NASCAR, you're going to be a high-profile driver. You know, with the ride, you're changing, but also you're leading the points. I'm going to be. Thanks, Claire. Well, very much so. <laughs> Keep working on this another 10, 12 years. Maybe I'll get there. Thanks. <laughs> You've taken that all. <laughs> Meaning a lot of media, television attention on you, asking you to do a lot of things, or maybe, I mean, do you, are you comfortable being, uh, and I really mean high-profile, getting a lot of attention, and, and, and delving into kind of you being more out there? Are you comfortable with that? And does that story portray you fairly? Are you that cheap? <laughs> I don't really honestly know where to go with any of that, Claire. <laughs> I really don't. I don't think we announced where I'm going next year. I didn't know I was going to be any more high profile or lower profile than I than I am today. I think we've had a pretty super year winning the 500, and I think I've had a super uh, pretty good. Uh, I mean, it could always be better, but I think we had a pretty good pretty good run there at Roush Fenway as well. So I'm not I'm not really sure what what all that means. And the story at that Nate Road was pretty accurate. Except for except for Eddie when he said I wasn't macho or something. Other than that, everything else was all right. <laughs> Work up here, Marty. Marty Smith, ESPN. Well, I was too. I don't know what you mean. I mean, I, who said I was going to be doing more or less stuff than I'm doing now? I, I don't know what I meant. Well, Go ahead, Claire. Well, yeah, because they're talking about television. And, you know, Who's talking about television? 
you had been talking about television and, you know, different people that were on different shows or, you know, NASCAR marketing different people. And with you, you are getting a lot of attention right now. But the story and you are a very private guy. And so that's two sort of different things in a way. Really sorry, but I just still don't. I just still, I just still don't know. I mean, I I'm you. a different guy away from the track than I am okay. at the track. I mean, your job is one thing, and I think with a story it was more about talking about. Uh, I don't know. I guess I have to put it in front of me and reread it again. But I thought I was talking about us, you know, riding motorcycles and you mean you know, a more private guy. You being a guy that a lot of people don't, yeah. you know, don't really know that. But I mean, way. I've been here since 2000. I've been the same guy ever since. So I think mm -hmm. that most of the people in this room probably, probably know who I am and who I'm not. Okay. Got it. I don't Thank know if that's going to change next year. I mean, I'm not going to all of a sudden change after after all these years. I think I'll be the same person, if gotcha. that's what you're asking. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead to Marty. Marty Smith, ESPN. Ready? Hey, Marty. Sure. Hello, You're going to be the first one. Um, when you go a while without winning, I know you haven't had some inordinate winless drought during your career, but how does winning feel differently after you haven't won for a while as opposed to when you might have a season where you win many times? Well, we, we have. I mean, we went a couple of years there, I think, before we won the, the 500 in 2009. I think we were almost, I don't know exactly the number, but I think it was almost two years or something like that. So we definitely have had those. Uh, and actually, when we won Texas last year, I think it was almost two years. So we have had them streaks that, in, in my mind, are really, really long, you know, and you wonder if you're going to win again. So I think uh, the less often you win and the longer you've been doing it, and the older you get, I think you kind of learn to enjoy those wins more so than when uh, you first start. I remember we went through a couple of pretty good years there, and in you know I think in 2002 we won five races or something like that. And by the time you, when you're third or fourth or fifth of the year, you kind of get, <coughs> yeah. I mean you, you still really enjoy it, and it's still it's still really cool, but you probably don't enjoy it and and appreciate it as much as you do, you know, when you go a while, you kind of more realize how hard it really is and. You know how uh, how uh, you know fortunate you were to have been in position to win those races. Um, you know before that point. Let's work our way over here. Raise your hand, Dwight. <clears throat> uh, Dwight Drum, Racetake dot com. <clears throat> uh, it, man, as far as the uh, uh, Daytona goes, the unpredictability. Every, you know, everybody says that, you know there's just no way. Don't know what's going to happen next week. And, and yet, you guys race every week. Could you just kind of talk a little bit about Daytona and having won one, uh, what kind of influence that is? Yeah, I mean, Daytona and Talladega, I guess, have always been known as wild cards and the opportunity to have uh, big wrecks and, and maybe produce some different winners that, that you wouldn't produce at, you know, Charlotte or Atlanta or Martinsville or whatever. So it's always kind of been like that. Um, I think the racing will be the same as it was at uh, the 500 and, and it was at Talladega. I mean, they haven't really made any rules changes, so I don't see the racing being any different. I think you'll see a pretty big pack, and I, see a, I think you'll see people trying to get, you know, being pretty aggressive, trying to get to the front to keep their cars cool and, uh, and to do some of that. Go ahead, Reed. With NASCAR Wire Service, uh, it's not a cup race, but it um, sounds like you had a lot of fun at Slinger. What does it mean to you to be the all-time winner of the Nationals there? It was fun going up to Slinger and uh, and racing. So um, I had a couple highlights of the night, but the best part was is uh, I let Kyle fly up with me and a couple of his crew members, and I don't know what I guess it was pick on Matt day, and uh, I got picked on all day. And uh, I do have to say my very favorite part of the day was uh, was beating him at the end of the race and and seeing him drive off the track wide open, not stop for the top three interviews and and storm out of there without talking to the media. That had to be my favorite part. <laughs> I never had to, even had to pick back. 